because uh, people were trying to kill me, and uh, uh, he seemed to t t didn't seem to be a great concern to him. And f for the next year, uh, 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 I jokingly said that people at this table were trying to get me killed for the whole damn year. So uh, I didn't know who the enemy was exactly, but uh, uh, we I lifted these people for a year. Uh, I, I w w felt wonderfully given a, a, a wonderful opportunity to do so. We trained with them. That's one of the things that made made that uh, combat really effective. Uh, one of my aircraft that was supporting this on that day uh, disappeared on the 28th of December, and we've never found them. Uh, so I have four MIAs, and uh, uh, that, it's really tough to have an MIA. I, I, a KIA, I could do something about. I could write the letter and saying how sorry I was that your son or your or your uh, husband uh, was uh, killed on the battlefield. How do you write a letter to say I can't find your husband to a woman that you've known for three and a half years and you know her kids? Uh, that's a tough part. You don't. You can't. Not only write the letter. You can't decide when to write it. You can't. Because uh, when do you decide that the uh, that the uh, guy's uh, truly not going to be found? So uh, MIAs uh, were should not be forgotten. Uh, we have a site uh, where they think that it, that bird might be down, uh, and I hope that they they excavate it this year. Uh, one more comment is that if you saw George Force come running down through your unit area, uh, you, you'd probably let him go too and, and, and try to hide. He's a, uh, he is as fast as he is, as uh, uh, he says he is, and he's qu quite a bit bigger than any but he should be. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So uh, no, everybody at this table. Uh, is a is a friend that I would walk to hell with, and I suspect we'd be welcomed by some of our friends. <laughs> now, if there are some in this room who have not read the book and haven't seen the movie and need a little precis of the battle itself. Raise your hand. Let me do a count. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Shall I? I, I think that we're just going to go by the majority rules and throw it open to questions instead. And so if you have a question you want a specific member of the panel to address, shout it out because we're all deaf as posts. <laughs> Those who aren't wearing hearing aids in both ears are sitting there saying to the other, what did he say? <laughs> so shout, it, shout your question out and say, we got a mic, that helps. You mentioned uh, Sergeant Plumley. First, where is he now? And can you talk a little bit about his background? <laughs> Delighted to. Sergeant Major, now retired command sergeant major, one of the first people to hold that exalted rank in the U.S. Army. Retired after 33 years service in Columbus, Georgia. Did 15 more years working for the Army at Martin Army Hospital on Fort Benning. Retired again. He's 87, I think, this year. Uh, he is crustier than Sam Elliott could even portray in the movie. Not a man to trifle with. Man of few words. Listen carefully. When he says something, even today, he uh, lives with his wife, Doris, in Columbus, Georgia. He still occasionally travels around and makes a talk or two. If he comes anywhere near you, he's worth listening to. He joined the Army in 1941 
became a paratrooper. I said, why did you join the Army, Sergeant Major? He came out of West Virginia, out of the hills and hollers. He said, I joined the Army to keep from starving to death, Joe. Uh, and he joined the paratroopers because it was worth $60 more a month in pay. He made and survived all four combat jumps of the 82nd Airborne in World War II, Sicily, Salerno, Normandy, and Holland. And then one combat jump with the 187th in Korea, that's five stars on his master jump wings. And he also wears the CIB, the Combat Infantry Badge, with two stars on it, World War II, Korea and Vietnam. The U.S. Army only ever gave out 270 of those CIBs. Very special man, a very small club he belongs to. And I'm, I'm proud to call him a friend and, and uh, boy, I'm sure glad I was not an enlisted man in any operation he ever ran. <laughs> he was tough. You want to add anything to that, guys? All right, next question. Yes, sir. Um, I noticed that you said everything except. I've heard that you said everything except who we were fighting. Who we were fighting? Yes, sir. Oh. We were fighting the North Vietnamese Army for the largest part. Two regiments and an extra battalion of main force Viet Cong. The, these uh, North Vietnamese who had come down the Ho Chi Minh Trail were, you know, besides the 1st Cavalry Division, the finest light infantrymen in the world. They were damn good. We were just a little better. Let me take a stab at that. Um, I, I think, first of all, uh, training is key. I, I have, um, uh, in my second life, or third life, or whatever it is, uh, have developed this formula that I, I believe um, can be overlaid over any situation. And I call it light, lead, inform, Train and trust, and you'll get execution. Good leadership, good information, because I, I see you're a major in the Air Force. Is that yeah. correct? Um, information is a double-edged sword. Good information helps you make good decisions. Bad information can destroy your unit. Training, I, I, I often look at professional athletes and, and take I'll just use Tiger Woods as an example. When he's disappointed, it's not on the good shots. It's on the bad shots because he doesn't expect to make any of those. I mean, he, 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 he practices and practices and practices. Um, that part of that training leads to trust. Trust is, is hard to get. It's easy to lose, and once you lose it, you don't get it back. And execution is, is, is what your people do as a result of all of that, those first three elements. Very good. 